Today we're going to talk about set D5, Sophie's rare genetic condition. Set D5 syndrome occurs when a change happens to the set D5 gene on chromosome 3. It could be a duplication, a deletion, or a nonsense mutation. Sophie has a nonsense mutation, which means that one letter was substituted for another, causing a stop and a loss of function on the gene. It's generally thought that a nonsense mutation is less severe than a deletion or a duplication. People with SETD5 can have growth and developmental issues. For example, they could have microcephaly, which is small head size, and they also could have global developmental delays or intellectual disability. They may also have certain medical conditions such as heart defects, seizures, vision and hearing problems, scoliosis, leg length discrepancy, and extra fingers and toes. It's important to note that all patients with SETD5 do not have all of the symptoms. It really depends on what type of change occurs on the SETD5 gene. you a little bit about Sophie. She's seven years old. She does have SETD5 and she was diagnosed about two years ago. She came home from China with developmental delays and we didn't know the cause of those developmental delays and they were really severe. So eventually we ended up getting um, whole exome testing um, on, and this was done by a geneticist and that's when she was diagnosed. Sophie is a very joyful, happy child. She makes friends easily. She enjoys meeting new people and talking to people. She loves playing with baby dolls and Legos. She loves reading. Um, she loves learning. And she's just a joy to be around. And honestly, she is just a blessing to everybody that she meets. Oh, the secret smile, little things I remember. was a believer sometimes I can feel her arms holding Sophie has global developmental delays so she's delayed in all areas in speech in occupational therapy fine motor as well as gross motor skills currently she receives speech therapy twice a week occupational therapy once a week and physical therapy once a week she operates at about the level of a four to five year old, depending on what the skill is that she's trying to do. Socially, she's probably closer to age five and she gets along really well and plays really well with four and five year old children. Uh, when she's tested in speech, she usually tests more like a three and a half year old to four year old. Childhood apraxia of speech is a condition that she has that affects her speech development. It is a very severe speech disorder and it has to do with, the, with her brain not communicating well with the rest of her body to help her talk, like her tongue and her mouth muscles. So there's a disconnect there. In addition to having childhood apraxia of speech, she also has dyspraxia, which is an overall global body apraxia. So it's really the same thing where her brain, there's a disconnect between her brain and the rest of her body in terms of how she needs to make her body move. We're fighting her getting muscle for Danny. Medically, Sophie has hypotonia, which is an all over low muscle tone in her body. It does affect her eating. It makes it more difficult for her to chew food, especially if she's tired. She's also had seizures and she has had an overnight uh, two night EEG, which showed that she had an abnormal EEG. However, she didn't have seizures during that hospitalization. She also has a benign heart defect. It's a second superior vena cava on the left side. This is thought to be a benign heart defect, just meaning that it won't really cause her any issues, um, but technically it is an abnormality. 
Sophie also has a leg length discrepancy. One of her legs is longer than the other and it probably impacts her overall coordination. Looking for my mother's eyes as I'm staying close to the mirror. A lock of gold, a secret smile, little things I remember. Sophie completed kindergarten this year at age seven, so she was behind a year. We did kindergarten last year as well, and she just was not ready to go on to first grade. So we do homeschool, which has been a benefit for her because we can just go over concepts over and over again and spend as much time as we need to before we move on. Um, some of the literature for set D5 suggests that kids with set D5 are probably not going to read and that some of the activities of daily living type skills would be better um, to do with them rather than some of the academic skills like reading and writing. However, we didn't want to give up on that and with a lot of um, just sitting and working with her and perseverance on her part, she is reading now. So she's beginning to read, she's beginning to add and subtract, and her handwriting is improving. So we're just going to keep going at her pace and I feel like she's making a lot of progress and I'm really encouraged. So if you want information about homeschooling with Set D5, I will put a card up here and you can click on a video that we have about her kindergarten year and some of the curriculum that we used that worked and others that we tried that really were not a good fit for her. Thanks for watching our video and I hope it's helped you understand Set D5 a little bit better and get to know Sophie a little bit more. And um, we hope that you'll subscribe. If you like the content, please give it a like. And we hope to see you next time. Love.